This lesson is going to be on U substitution, which is going to still be integration, but it's a technique that we need when we integrate. Now, when we're taking the derivative, and sometimes we had to use what was known as the chain rule. Well, anytime we had to do that, notice it was because we had a form where we had a function in another function or the composite of two functions. So the integration equivalent of a chain rule is called a U substitution. So let's see how to recognize and use, a, U, use U substitution. So um, earlier in class, we looked at functions where we had an exponent, but what we did with that exponent was we multiplied out the actual function. And that, that's pretty reasonable to do if your exponent is a 2. Um, but when you start getting larger exponents, that's really not something you want to do. So what we're going to do is a use substitution. In other words, we're going to replace parts of this integral with another variable and then make it once we do our exchange now we have to preserve the value of the integral we're just changing the appearance of it so here um, most of the time what you need to try to change out would be um, something in this form here and what we'll do the reason why this is called a u substitution is we're going to say well u is going to be equal to this x squared minus 1. And what we'll do as soon as we assign a u value, we're going to find the derivative of that assigned u value. Well, the derivative of what we let u be is 2x dx. Now, what we're going to do with this information is we're going to go back and see if we can change out some values. Notice all of this that's underlined, that is what we let u be. Now notice we had a du because really at the end of the day when we start integrating, we're going to want something to look like the integral of u du. And in order for that to happen, we had to make this substitution. Well, I'm going to say u is all this stuff inside the parentheses, which is what I have here. And then notice du, which is going to be this idea out here. Notice that's equal to 2x dx. Well, we have a dx already. We already have an x. Now, what we don't have is a 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this u substitution but in our rewriting process, we have to be mindful of what we, some new values that we might have generated. So we're going to have the integral of u to the fifth, because I'm letting u replace what's inside the parentheses. So I have u to the fifth, and I do need to write du. That always has to be there. Now examine the value of du. It was 2x dx. We had an x and we have a dx. We did not have this 2. So my du is 2 more of what I had originally. So to balance that, I need to put a 1 half out here to balance the value. Now that I've done all that, I'm ready to integrate. I've got all of my original values accounted for. I have my new values balanced, and so now we're ready to integrate. And we would just bring our one half down, and we see that's going to be u to the sixth over six plus c. And then we need to go back and change out to our original because we did not start with a u, so we don't finish with a u. We have to change it back. And so when we go back to what our original value was, we can go ahead and multiply the 2 and the 6. So I have 1 12th u, but u took the place of x squared minus 1. And it's raised to the 6th power. And then we have plus c. 
All right, this is gonna take some practice, so be patient as we go through all of these. And let's move on to number two and see if we can repeat this process. So again, we don't wanna multiply this out four times. So we're gonna let u be what's inside the parentheses, which is three x minus two. And a lot of times that is the right way to start these. The next step, we need to find the derivative or du, which is gonna be three dx. And then we go back and we compare. Well, I know I'm gonna have an integral and I'm gonna have what's inside the parentheses, which was my u raised to the fourth, and I automatically have to write du. I have to carry that through. And let's see, what is the value of du? It's three dx, but I only have one dx given, so I need to balance this by putting a one-third on the outside. That way we're preserving the actual original value. And now we have one-third, and we're ready to integrate. So that's gonna be u to the fifth over five plus c. And now we just continue with our process and we do need to go back and resub in for what u was originally and go ahead and multiply these. So I have 1 15th and u was three x minus two raised to the fifth plus C. All right, let's continue on with our practice. So for number three, same idea again. We're going to need to go through and do some rewriting. Well, the first thing we notice is that we need to change 5x minus 2. We need to raise that to the one-half power. And now we need to do a u substitution and we are going to again let u be what's inside the parentheses that's always a great place to start doesn't work 100 percent of the time but it is a good place to check right so again we let u be what was inside parentheses we found the derivative of u and now we go back and we know we're going to have an integral u is going to replace what was inside the parentheses and we write our du. Now examine the value of du compared to the original. We had five times dx, but we only had one dx, so we do balance this with the one-fifth, preserve that value. And now let's go ahead and finish the problem. So we have one-fifth, and we need to add one to our exponent, so that's going to give us three halves over three halves, which is really multiplied by two thirds, plus C. And let's see, let's go back and change out, well, what was um, this gonna be? So we've got two over 15, U was five X minus two, raised to the three halves plus C. All right, let's continue on again. Let's check out number four. Again, same process here. So I would, um, here we've already got it rewritten and this four can move out to the outside. Now don't ever do that with variables, but you can with your constant values. So I have four times and let's see, we have the integral of six X minus one to the two thirds dx. And again, you would need to do a u sub here. It's gonna be six x minus one. And du is going to be six dx. And when we go back and do our substitution in, we do have a four, but this time we're also gonna have that extra six dx. So I'm gonna put a one sixth out here. And then on the inside, we have u to the two-thirds, du. And let's see, continuing on, and we're now to the point where we can actually integrate. So let's see, we're going to have two-thirds times u to the um, five-thirds. And let's see if we 
divide by that fraction, let's go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal, so 3 fifths, and then plus C. And so it looks like we're going to have 2 fifths times, and then U is going to be to this, U was 6X minus 1, and then all of that's raised to the 5 thirds plus C. Okay, so continuing on, um, we do have the integral of x times, we have x squared minus 2 raised to the 1 half and then dx. Now it's always tempting to try to move this x out here to the outside. Don't do that. Don't, 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 don't do that. So that's a big no there. So be careful with that. That x is going to have to stay. And when we do our u substitution, we're going to have to look for an x dx. So again, we're going to let u be what's on the inside of the parentheses once more. So u equals x squared minus 2. And so du is going to be 2x dx. And now... Let's go through, and we always go back, and we know we're going to have u raised to the 1 half, and we have a du. Now let's go back and make sure we've accounted for our values. du is 2x dx, but again, notice we only had an x dx, so we have an extra 2 that we're going to have to balance, so we're going to put a 1 half outside. And notice this x, the common question was, well, what happened to the x? Well, the x is replaced right here. It's built into the new du value. So be careful with that. If that x is built into du, then you're done with it. If it's not, then we're going to have to do something else. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to integrating. So that's going to be 1 half u to the 3 halves, so we're multiplying the front by 2 thirds, plus c, and then we go back and we do need to um, place our u value, and we need to do some canceling. So we have 1 third, u was x squared minus 2, and then we have all that raised to the 3 halves, and then plus c. All right, so let's look at our next example, following along. And again, this is another great example of where it might be tempting to move that x squared to the outside, but you cannot do that. So we do need to do some rewriting, though. So we have x squared, and we have 1 minus 4x cubed, all raised to the 1 half power. And dx, and let's go ahead and do our u substitution. So we have u equals 1 minus 4x cubed, and so our du is going to be negative 12x squared dx, and let's go ahead now and start our new integral, and we know we have our u raised to the 1 half we have our du. Now let's go and look at the value of du compared to what we already had. So x squared dx, we have that accounted for. The negative 12 is the extra, so we're going to put negative 1 12 to balance. And now we're ready to go ahead and do our integration. So that's negative 1 12. And then we're going to have u to the 3 halves. And so our coefficient is 2 thirds, and then plus C. And continuing this, we can do some canceling, of course. And so let's see, 2 cancels into 12, leaving us 6. So we have negative 1 18th. And then U was 1 minus 4X cubed. And that's all raised to the 3 halves plus C. Okay, some more rewriting is involved here on number seven. And do remember that we have to um, flip over um, and have this stuff in the denominator. We're going to have to move that to the numerator. And I'm going to do all this rewriting in one step because I, I feel like we're all there. So we have x 
and then I have 2x squared minus 1, and now that's going to be raised to the negative 1 third dx. And again, we can do our u substitution here. So let's go ahead and work through that. And just like all the other examples, u equals 2x squared minus 1. So du is going to be 4x and then dx. And we're going to start our new integral, u to the negative 1 third. And let's see, we have our du. And let's see what we need to balance out. We have an extra 4, so let's do a 1 fourth. And again, continuing on with our process, we're going to have u to the positive 2 thirds, isn't it? And because we again remember we're adding one, but this time it's one minus a third, which is two thirds. So then we multiply by three halves plus c. And again, we can go back and finish out by um, replugging in for my u value. So it looks like we're going to have three eighths, and then in place of u, we have two x squared minus one. This is raised to the two-thirds and then plus C. All right, so again, continuing on with the process, same ideas, same process. And here, well, they were awful generous here. Everything was already um, flipped over and done for us. So let's go ahead and say, well, the U is going to be X to the three-halves plus 2, and so then du then is going to be 3 halves x raised to the 1 half dx, and we're ready to do our use. Um, so let's see, we're going to have u to the ninth du, and let's see, x to the 1 half dx is built in to our du value. This is the extra, so to balance that, we're going to put a two-thirds out here. And so we have two-thirds, and this is going to end up being u to the tenth over 10 plus c. And it looks like we're going to end up with, let's see, two cancels with 10, leaving 5. So we're going to have 1 over 15. And in place of u, we're going to resub back in x to the 3 halves plus 2. And that's raised to the 10th plus c. Okay, now we're getting to some, all of the previous problems we've looked at. We've picked what was in parentheses. But this time, we're going to have two different things in parentheses. So we have to give a little more thought to, well, what should we choose for our u value? The first parentheses, we have x plus 2. And then notice in the second parentheses, we have x squared plus 4x minus 3. And all of that is going to be raised to the 1 half power. And so here, when you've got two different parentheses to choose from, I would choose the parentheses that had the highest power. That's a good place to start because I know when I take the derivative of x squared, I'm going to get an x generated. And then for my next term, when I take the derivative of 4x, I'm going to get a constant value generated. So usually a good rule of thumb is choose the parentheses that has the most terms in it. That's a good place to start. Now, is that going to generate a, a true u substitution every single problem? No, but it's all, always a good place to get started. So we're going to say u equals x squared plus 4x minus 3. And then I'm going to do the derivative, generate my du. Well, du is going to give me 2x plus 4, and then all of that dx. Well, when we start doing our integral, and again, we let u be all of that in parentheses, so I'm going to have a u raised to the 1 half, automatically have du, 
but this du, that's what I need to go back and examine. Well, du, well, dx is taken care of, and that's always going to be. But notice I have 2x plus 4, but up here I have x plus 2. So if I needed to, I could rewrite, I could take out a GCF here and have x plus 2 dx. Now notice what we did here. We generated our x plus 2 dx. Now we didn't see it right off. So that's something we need to be careful about. And again, we have everything accounted for in our du, but we have an extra 2. So again, we need to balance that with a 1 half. So we have 1 half, and we're ready to integrate. So that's going to be u to the 3 halves, coefficient 2 thirds plus c, and so that's going to give me one-third, the twos should cancel, times, and then u was all of that x squared plus 4x minus 3 raised to the 3 halves, and then plus c. So that one was a little bit tricky, but again, nothing beyond what we can do. It's just we have to look out for all these different things that might be hidden there. All right, now for number 10, number 10 is what I call a special kind of dear goodness because notice here when we, we're going to do some rewriting, of course, we have x plus 2, no biggie there, times x minus 4 raised to the 1 half. Well, now, again, we have the same amount of terms in both parentheses. Oh, forgot my dx. So, what in the world are we going to do? Well, I would always choose the one with the funky exponent. So, I would choose this one. So, because this one's exponent, of course, is just 1. So, I would choose the weird-looking exponent and say, okay, I'm going to let you be all this stuff on the inside. And if we do this, we have u equals x minus 4. But then du is equal to dx, and we have a problem. Because when I go back and I start saying, okay, well, now I have the integral of u to the 1 half, and I do, du, that du value does not take care of this x plus 2. So we have an issue. So what we have to do is go back and find a way to take care of that because we can't really move any of this to the outside of the integral we're, because it's x plus 2 times all of this other stuff. So what we're going to have to do is pick on um, our value here. And what we can do is rearrange this for x. Let's solve this equation for x. I'm going to add 4 over to the other side. So I have u plus 4 is equal to x. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to replace this x value with u plus 4. So I'm going to have to scribble through that because that did not take care of all my terms. Now it did some of them and I do need that u to the 1 half. But I, and that's taking care of this portion here, but I need this portion here. So what I'm going to do is in place of x, I'm going to replace it with what I found x to be equal to, which is u plus 4, but I also have a plus 2 sitting there, so I'm going to bring that down, and then du. Now I have preserved the actual, the original value of the integral. If we don't make sure we have every part accounted for, then we're not going to generate the correct answer. Well, let's look at what we can do with this. We have u to the 1 half times, and this is really u plus 6 du. And now, instead of trying to do another u substitution, we can distribute through each part so that's going to be the integral of u to the, if I multiply with like basis, remember to add your exponent. So 1 plus a half is 3 halves, plus 6u to the 1 half, du. And now let's go through and actually integrate because now at 
this point, this is something we can integrate, but we've had to jump through a lot of hoops to get there. So don't let these type of problems discourage you. We can work through them. It's just gonna take some practice. So here we have u to the, let's see, three halves. If we're integrating that, so we're gonna end up with five halves. So my coefficient is two fifths. And then plus, and we have six times, this is gonna be u to the three halves. So my coefficient, of course, is two thirds. And then plus c. And so let's continue on and see if we can finish this. Now we have to remember originally u was x minus four. So we're gonna fill in some of this. So we have two fifths times x minus four raised to the five halves plus, and let's see, three cancels into six, leaving two, so I have four times x minus four to the three halves, and then we have plus c. Finally, we've come to the end of that problem, and that was some more problem. It was difficult, I understand. Um, do remember though, with this, the, what caused the biggest trouble here was the fact that we had, when we did our u substitution, and it was really, with this, we chose the right substitution. The issue was we had all of this extra out here, the x plus two, that we had to come down here and make adjustments for. So we have to be careful with these problems. Okay, continuing on, and this problem is gonna be very similar to the other problem we just did. Now we do need to go through and do some rewriting. So I'm gonna have x minus five, but we need to change all of this that's in the bottom. So we're gonna flip that over to be x minus six raised to the negative one half dx. And again, we're gonna to have to do some u substitution and we're probably gonna to have to do some algebra here. Again, I would let u be the stuff that has the funky exponent. And then du, again, you notice it's just going to generate a dx. And again, we have more than just a dx up there. And notice the extra stuff is up here in the integral. It's not built into the du. If it was built into the du, then we could adjust it by just multiplying by the reciprocal in front of the integral. But we don't have that. The extra stuff is up here in the original problem. And so, again, I would take time and go ahead and solve um, for x down here and say u plus 6 is going to be equal to x. And again, whenever I do my integral, and I know I have u to the negative 1 half, but if I write du, I'm just going to account for the dx, and I'm not going to have anything to account for the x minus 5. So again, I know now x is equal to u plus six, and then I already have a minus five there, and now I can go ahead and do some more work with this. And again, let's see, let's go ahead, we have the integral, and all of that inside the parentheses, well, let's go ahead and just write it in. We have u to the negative one half, and then I have u plus one du, and I would go ahead and do the distributive property. And so that's going to give me u to the positive one half plus u to the negative one half du. And now let's go ahead and do our integration. So we're going to have u to the um, three halves. So we have two thirds in front. And then plus u to the one half and two in front plus c and now let's go back and do our substitution back for u remember u was x minus six so we're going to go back and fill that in so i have two thirds times x minus six to the three halves plus two times x minus six to the one half and then plus C. Okay, so number 12, again, 
let's start by rewriting this. So I have the integral of x squared times x plus 1 to the negative 1 half dx. And now let's look at this problem. Um, it, it's going to work out kind of weird because all of the stuff we've been letting you equal the funky exponent stuff and then du well, that's going to generate a dx and then we were able to come down here and do our solving so we're going to have u minus 1 equals x okay well let's look at what we have here so we're going to have the integral and of course we have u to the negative one half but now I have times u minus 1. And look at whenever I plug in for x, it's all squared. So I'm going to have to square this du. So we still have some more rewriting here. So let's continue with this. Now I can't distribute my u to the negative 1 half because of that u squared. So what I'm going to have to do is multiply out that other parentheses. So I'm going to have u to the negative 1 half, and then I need to fool out. So I have u squared minus 2u plus 1 du. And now I can do my distributive property. And this is the problem that just keeps on going. So we have the integral. And now let's see what we have. We have u to the 3 halves. So here I'm distributing and I'm adding exponents. 2 minus a half, it's 1 and a half or 3 halves, minus 2u to the positive 1 half, and then plus u to the negative 1 half, and then du. Now we have all of that redone. Now we're ready to do our actual integration. All those steps and we've still not integrated. So let's go ahead and integrate. So we're going to have u to the 5 halves, so that's 2 fifths, minus 2 times, and that's going to be u to the 3 halves, so that's times 2 thirds, plus, and that's going to be u to the positive 1 half, so times 2, plus c, and now we're ready to go back and re-sub in. So we have 2 fifths times u was x plus 1. And that's all raised to the 5 halves minus, and that's going to be 4 thirds times x plus 1 raised to the 3 halves plus 2 times x plus 1 to the half, and then plus c. Okay, now with our trig, um, what we can do is, again, still some u substitution. Now, something for us to remember is we have sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine, and when we move down this chain, that's the derivative. But when we move up the chain, that's integration. So that's always handy to have in our minds. And so anytime we're doing this, we want to say um, pretty quickly, we want to go through and say, well, I know whenever I start doing um, some integration, I know if I integrate cosine, well, then that's going to give me sine. But what about this 4x here? Well, that's where we're going to have to do a u substitution, is usually with that angle. So what we'll have to do is say, well, u can be 4x. So du is going to be 4dx. And again, when we do our integral, we're going to have cosine, not of 4x, but cosine of u, and then du. And again, du is 4dx, so we need we only have one dx up there, so we need to balance that with a 1 fourth. And now we have 1 fourth, and the integral of cosine is sine u, and then plus c. But then we need to come back 
and resub in what u was, which was 4x. So my final answer is 1 fourth sine 4x and then plus c. So usually students think the trig part's a little bit easier, and it can be uh, quite a bit easier than what we're um, used to seeing. All right, so let's see. For number 14, again, I would start right here and make a u substitution. So u equals 1 minus 3x. So du equals negative 3 dx. And again, we're going to go back and fill in. So I have the integral. And we're going to have sine of u du. And now let's see what all values does du encompass. Well, it's a negative 3 dx. Well, I have a 3 already, and I have a dx already. So all I need now is that negative. So I'm going to put a negative out front to cancel the negative for the du. And again, what am I going to get if I integrate sine? If I integrate sine, I'm going to get negative cosine. We would just wrap around our chain. And so I already have one negative, and then I have negative cosine of u, but we saw u was 1 minus 3x, and then we have plus c. And of course, you can cancel out your negatives. So you have cosine of 1 minus 3x plus c. Okay, now when you have problems like 15, we have to pay attention to um, the exponents here. And so with this, remember in the rewriting, I would rewrite this to be sine x all raised to the third and then cosine x dx. And that makes it a little bit easier to see. And you are going to try to use substitution with stuff raised to the exponent. So I'm going to say, well, u equals sine of x. And notice du is derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x dx. So that worked out nice because that du encompasses all of this that we already had. So when we come back here to do our um, u substitution, well, I have u raised to the third power du. And again, that cosine x is built into the value of du, so you don't have to worry about it anymore. And so this becomes u to the fourth over 4 plus c. And then we need to go back and fill in what u was originally. u originally was sine x. So we have sine x all raised to the fourth power all over 4 and plus c. Okay, so let's go ahead now and look at their next example. The integral of sine 10x secant 10x. Well, that is very strange. It's kind of almost intimidating when you first look at it. But you need to go back and look at your formulas here. And really, this 10x, that's, let's let u be 10x. So I'm going to say, well, u is going to be our angle, which is 10x. So du is just going to be 10 dx. And when I go back and make my u substitution, I have the integral of tangent u times secant u du. Now du is 10 dx, but I only had 1 dx, so I need to balance that with 1 tenth. And you need to go see, well, what is this? All of this should be some trig value. And so we end up with 1 tenth. And if we integrate this, our formula is just secant u plus c. And of course, don't forget to go back and fill in what um, u was originally. So we have 1 tenth secant of 10x plus c.